Okay, so every single card has been revealed so far. So I want to do a little tier list on the legendaries. I've seen other people do it. Um, usually I don't do this. Usually I do a big old tier list of every single card, but I'm going to do that for tomorrow because, well, I didn't have time to do it for the this week. Um, this is going up on uh, Saturday, so let's get into it. We start with Exarch Maladar. It's a 6-mana 5-5 five, five Drain Knight. Battle Cry the next card you play this turn costs Corpse instead of mana. I think this card just looks good. Maybe it does, it's not, like, good right now, maybe. I'm saying maybe, right? But it definitely is a card that will be good in the future. Uh, let's change this. Looks good. Maybe not right now, but in the future. So, yeah, I think, like, Maldar, like, the fact that you just can cheat out anything, anything, because it just says card. It doesn't say minion, doesn't say spell, doesn't say battle cry, doesn't say death rattle, doesn't say anything. It just says card. So I think that there's no world where this just isn't going to be a good card in the future at some point. Uh, it, it just provides so much cheat. <laughs> and, like, being able to cheat literally anything, yeah, like, come on, guys. There's no way that there isn't going to be something broken about it in the future eventually. Uh, the eight hands from beyond battle cry, destroy both, uh, players decks, except the eight highest cards. Yeah. Eight highest cost cards in each. It's eight man, eight, eight, two blood runes. And it's a beast. I think it looks kind of fun, but it seems pretty bad. I don't think this card really does anything. Like people have been like trying, like experimenting with kill Jaden just in different decks and maybe that's okay. Right. But I think that it's just not that great overall. Uh, I don't even think the, the Kill Jaden package in Warlock is all that great. I'm going to be honest with you. Like, maybe it's okay, but I, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm really not sure. It's just, I'm, 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 I don't know. When I was watching people play during theory crafting, it didn't look that great either. So maybe that's just me, but in, or maybe it's only who I watched, but I'm not too sure. I, I just don't have faith in this card at all. Idra, Rebel Captain, four mana, five, four, battle cry. Uh, shuffle all eight crewmates into your deck. Death rattle, draw one. It's a rush and it's a drain eye. I don't think this card's very good. Uh, I think that this card actually is so bad that it holds back the entire crewmate package. The crewmate package like looks pretty fun and it looks pretty interesting, but Didra is just so unbelievably bad that like the package doesn't have enough cards to function. It's only three cards and you can't tutor any of them or anything like that. Like, Didra being such a bad legendary really holds back the package because it just needs another playable card and it doesn't have one. I mean, like, it's a 4-mana 5-4 with Rush. That's not the worst thing ever, but it just, it ruins your draws. And then, like, when you do draw the crewmates, you're going to draw them, like, intermittently. So there's going to be cards in between them, which is just, like, so awful. Like, did they just really not think this card through? I'm not sure. Uh, Zordoth the Breaker. Battlecry add 2 stars uh to both sides of your hands when they collide deal five damage to all enemies i think this card is like kind of fun it's a sorry it's a six mana five five demon as well the card is kind of fun right so because even in wild you can actually do some like kind of funny combos it's like in infinity mana combos though right so it's not good but you can do like brand zortoth zy the incredible sorry sorry uh tired uh zy or Brand, Zortoth, Sai the Incredible, and then you could do like 20 damage in your hand, but it takes like it takes nine hand slots because you also have to have a card in between the stars so that they don't instantly pop. I mean, it just seems really terrible. <laughs> I'm gonna be real with you. I don't think Zortoth is very good. Maybe in standard it's okay, but like in wild and overall, it just seems pretty bad. I don't know. I don't think it's that great. Uh, Exarch Othar, 4 mana 3 3 Drain Eye, Battle Cry. If you're building a starship, get three different arcane spells, reduce their cost by two. I think it it's like looks good. I, I don't know. I don't know. The starship, uh, starships started to look a lot better as people like progressed on Theory Crafting Day. In the morning, almost no one was playing them, right? But as people played more and more, they started to realize hey, they weren't that bad. It's just you couldn't really run a uh, Dimensional Core, which is the 3 mana 3 2. Divine Shield Starship piece, because that one was terrible. That one was bad. So a lot, every Starship really only has three pieces, which is a big issue, because a lot of them are, like, stat-based, right? Uh, the Druid one isn't, though. The Druid one, I think, is, like, actually the only one that doesn't have an effect that's based on its own stats. So I think that, like, the Druid one is pretty decent. Uh, 
being able to like double your arcane spells can do some pretty crazy stuff you can get a crazy amount of like like discounts and card draw uh and because you can duplicate your arcane effects you can build like a giant board sorry you on again I think that Exarch Othar probably is pretty good. Again, maybe not right now, but maybe in the future, like when you get better uh, arcane spells, like past rotation, it just seems like it will be really good. Uh, Ulu, the Everdrifter, 5 mana, 6, 5. Beast, each time this is in your hand, gain... Or each turn this is in your hand, gain 2 random, choose 1 choices. This card's obvious. I mean, this card's so bad, right? There's not very many choose 1 cards that even cost more than 5, that you're so you can get like... You know mana cheat from it with ulu and there's so many bad options like if you've ever like seen through all the options just such a it's a bad card it's just like actually a bad card i don't even need to talk about it very much it's just it's just so worthless uh then we have like exarch niel i think that it's like it looks good i don't think it's broken by any means but it just looks like a strong legendary that is really like going to help hunt throughout a lot so three mana three four drain eye battle cry probably secure hero power with tracking uh, one mana, discover a card from your deck each turn. Uh, it's a really good card. Do not get me wrong. But it's not like a broken card, I, I believe, in like any way. It's strong, but not every card has to be broken to be playable. And I think that's exactly what Nayeli does. I, I, I don't know. I think Nayel, Nayeli, 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 whatever, is just going to be a staple, really strong card. But I would not call it broken. I really wouldn't. Uh, then we have Gorm the World Eater. Broken card. I mean, I think this card is just terrible. I don't know. I don't know if I'd call it terrible, but it looks really bad. The so three minute 12 12 beast. And like, yeah, that sounds crazy, right? Dormant for five turns. At the end of your turn, destroy the minion to the right of this to awaken one turn sooner. So it's supposed to be like popping your death rattles, right? But that seems bad. <laughs> uh, maybe if it just a trigger the death rattle of a minion to the right or something like that to awaken one turn sooner it'd be like significantly better but destroying your death rattles is not very good because like well you want to proc them with like yelling yodeler and in wild people are like oh you can run this in beast hunter and like i guess you can but it's not that good right like yeah you can get a three mana 12 12 with charge on like turn six or whatever but you have to sacrifice your board to make it come out sooner and you have to guaranteed have the damage to kill your opponent on that turn, or it just is going to die because, well, wild decks don't play around with, like, single target minions like that. So... It just seems terrible. It just seems so bad. It doesn't do anything the moment it awakens. It can't attack. It's just a 12-12. And it's not even, like... I think if it were, like, a 16-16, then we would have a conversation about, like, the charger, like, running it with Thunder Rhino, because that's, like, a lot of damage, right? But 12 damage compared to 40 health is nothing compared to 16. It's, like, I don't know. Like, that's a whole 10% increase, right, from, uh, like, 4 damage is 10% of 40. That is a huge increase. So, I don't know. I think that Gorm is just... <laughs> I think Gorm is just really bad. Uh, then we have... Exarch Hataru, uh, 5 mana, 5, 5, Drain Eye, Battle Cry, Discover a Spell, and reduce its cost by 1. If you play it this turn, repeat this effect. I think this card's just bad. Uh, this is definitely one of those cards that probably gets better on rotation, but for this expansion, it just looks really bad. I don't even think it looks like good in the future, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, the idea is you're supposed to play it with the other 5 mana Drain Eye that like, refreshes mana equal to the attack of the next drain eye you play so that you'll play this and then well it costs zero but random spells just i don't know man maybe i'm just like a non-believer in random spells but whenever i see random spell cards they just always look terrible to me and they always feel terrible to play but then suddenly they just like are really good because i don't really i don't play standard so i don't know like the quality of random spells like 99 percent of the time but we are three expansions into the year, so random spells lose a lot of their value compared to, like, being a first of an expansion, right? I just, I don't see it. I really don't, for, for either format. I have them playing, like, significantly, a significant amount more standard than I have wild this last, like, well, since the mini set, actually. And I, like, so I, that's why I like to talk about uh, standard lately, it's just, like, I've been playing it more than wild, right? I just don't think this card really does much of anything. It just seems really bad. Maybe if, like, Source Apprentice didn't get nerfed, you could go infinite with it or something. You probably couldn't, right? But it's still... I don't know. It just it just looks like a terrible card. 
Uh, then we have Sarood. I think this card looks really good. Uh, six mana, seven, six, elemental, battle cry, give all elementals in your deck fire spell damage plus one. So you give all your elementals fire spell damage plus one, and that's pretty good on its own, but it's really strong with overflow surger. Overflow surger will summon copies of itself equal to how many elementals you played on previous turns. So if you get a full board of it, you get plus seven spell damage. You have the new card solar flare, which is, ha <laughs> it's a five mana spell that deals two damage to all enemies. Uh, it's a fire spell, so but it is cost one less for each elemental you have, so it's zero mana, deal nine to all enemies. That's pretty good. You can do it twice. You can run other cards like Molten Rune. Molten Rune becomes five mana, deal 20 damage to your opponent. I mean, you, if you just preemptively forge it, it's only three mana too. So it just seems like Saroon is going to be really good. Elemental Mage is already really strong, and like, Running Saroon is not really much of a downside. Yeah, you have a six drop that you have to run, but like the upside of running Saroon, and especially compared to the upside of running the new uh, like Solar Flare uh, and oh, I don't remember what it's called. It's the three mana three one that draws three cards, but I mean, if they're not elementals or fire spells, they'd get destroyed. Running that card definitely makes Saroon worth playing, like because you just have so much card draw, right? I think Saroon is definitely going to see play. I, I think there is no world where it doesn't. I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, then Yarel Beacon of Hope. I think it like, Ooh, excuse me, sorry, I'm having a rough one. Uh, it's a five mana four three Drain Eye Rush Death Rattle. Get three different Librams from an older timeline, so you get one of each Libram. Libram of Wisdom kind of sucks. Um, Libram of Wisdom was the best one in the past, right? But that was because we had Animated Broomstick and we had a uh, Penflinger. The new best Libram is the four mana one, and the four mana one is really good like so good that if you fill your hand with Librams of Wisdom you feel bad right because you could accidentally lose out on the new four mana Libram which is really strong uh the four mana Libram is four mana give minion plus three plus three if it costs zero add it to your add it to your hand at the end of your turn I think is what it is but anyway it's zero mana plus three plus three every single turn that's really strong. You push so much damage. The minion, you can just keep buffing the same minion over and over again. It's just really good. I think Yorel is just not that great. Like, uh, you have Libram of Wisdom, which is the two mana, plus one, plus one. Uh, it, death Rattle, add to your hand. You have Libram of Justice, which is the uh, five mana, set all minions to one health. Get a weapon, or a one four weapon, which is pretty good, actually. And then you have Libram of Hope, which is the nine mana, restore eight health, summon eight eight with taunt and uh, divine shield, which is also pretty good. It's just, Yorel is just so not that great. I think that it's not worth playing. Um, so, <coughs> sorry. So what I saw during theory crafting is that there are two kinds of like lists that people were playing with uh, Librams. They're trying to play like a slow kind of like value list. And that one looked pretty bad. And that's what was running Yorel. It just looked pretty bad. Then I saw a list that was playing like kind of aggro oriented and wasn't running Yorel. And that one looked significantly better. And by aggro, I mean like mid-range, right? It's a paladin deck. They don't play like face aggro. They don't play like swarm aggro. They play mid-range. Um, but it still looked significantly better and it wasn't running Yorel. So yeah, Yorel looks pretty fun, but I just don't think it's that good of a card. Uh, then we have Lumia. Okay, I know I just said Yorel looks like a bad card, but Lumia looks like an actually really good card. The six mana, nine, nine lifesteal. After a hero takes damage, they become immune for the rest of the turn. You just drop this and you can't die. I mean, technically you can, right? If they remove it, you know, and then hit you in the face. Oh yeah. But if they have, if they're like a minion based deck, right? And they're trying to kill you and you drop Lumia on them. Well, they have to bump the Lumia multiple times or they aren't going to be able to kill you. And then if they have to bump Lumia, they have to bump a six man nine, nine with life seal. You guys see where I'm going with this, right? It's just such a stop gap legendary that like if you're playing like a slow air ish paladin deck and you drop this against an aggro deck, they kind of can't play the game unless they can kill you th like kill you through the like in one in damage instance, unless they can kill you in one damage in instance. Lumia is just like really good. I think this like every time I saw this card get played in theory crafting, it looked really strong. Maybe again, it's because theory crafting meta isn't like completely refined stuff like that, but it does seem quite strong. And I would be surprised if it didn't see play anywhere. It might not be the best card ever, but it definitely looks better than these cards so far. And it looks like better. It's going to be better than almost everything I'm putting in those low tiers. If you ask me personally, uh, then we have Kure, the light beyond. I mean, it just looked not very good. Uh, I don't know. It just looks mediocre, right? Three mana, three, three, uh, 
Priest, Legendary, Spellburst, Summon a random 3-cost minion. Holy Spells don't remove the Spellburst. Just looks mid. I don't know, it just looks like a mid card overall. Doesn't seem like it's going to do much. Like, yeah, you can build a board, but like, meh. I don't know, it just it just seems like a pretty mediocre card. I have to be really honest with you for a second. Uh, Ascara. 5 mana, 4, 5. Battlecry, the next Draenei you play summons a copy of itself. Draenei. So this card does look really strong. I think that, like, Draenei Priest, where you're just trying to get a bunch of, like, as many buffs as you can into your Velen pool and then play a billion Velens in a row and have turns of just giant boards of Velens in a row and a row and a row and you keep copying it over and over and over again, stuff like that, that seems really good to me, right? Like, it seems like you just can't lose because eventually your board will be so gigantic that unless they, you know, Reno it, they can't really clear it. And if they do clear it, well, you could just, like, I don't even know. You, you could technically put amalgams in your deck and ha make your villains go infinite, but I don't think that's that good. I'm going to be honest with you. I think without a way to draw cards, uh, that would just be, you know, griefing your pool, but that's just me. Um, you would be able to make, like, a ultra-massive amalgam, though, because, like, your villains would all, like, give it, like, plus 40-something, plus 40-something. I, I don't remember the exact numbers. When you have seven villains die that all have the... Uh, the buffs in them. So you get you get a lot of stats, right? But what was I gonna say? Yeah, so you could put it like in the amalgam, but that doesn't do anything. You don't really have like a charge minion or like any way to give the amalgam charge or anything like that. Um if you were like I don't even know. Warrior could technically do it, right? Like Warrior uh could give the amalgam like it would make it attack a random enemy. So it could be like a giant amalgam that attacks a random enemy or something like that. Or but you could also just do that with any drain eye. So it's not like it matters. Uh I think that like the Warrior Drain Eye package looks really strong, by the way. Um I think Ascar is going to be a good card. I really do. I don't think that like I think that Priest did get like screwed over this set. Like the Priest set looks really bad overall, but Ascara looks like a pretty good card. Talgath. The gravitational. Okay. Talgath is a 4 mana 4 4 demon. Undamaged enemy minions take double damage. Combo, get a backstab. And it's a demon and it's in rogue. It just looks bad. It looks like an unplayable card. Like, it looked absolutely atrocious whenever people were playing it in theory of graphing. It's just such a terrible card. Okay. Then we have the, the gravitational displacer. 5 mana 4 3 starship piece. Whenever this is launched, summon a copy of the starship. So this is the only legendary that references starships, which is really annoying, actually. I really hate that. I think that is a big miss of this set. Like, almost every class has, like, one legendary that looks, like, pretty mediocre that is a starship class. So it's like, why could they have not made that for them all, right? Like, look at look at all this, man. It's fine, though. Um, I, So the rogue doesn't have its own starship. Rogue has cards that copy starship pieces from other classes. And then I guess you could like Maestra test to replay them all. And that's like the whole idea, right? So you can build a absolutely gigantic starship and you get two of them. And if Reno didn't exist, I think it would be good. But because Reno exists, building like an ultra massive starship that doesn't really have any combo potential looks really bad. It just does. Um... Like the war, the the hunter one looks like the best starship because it kills you, right? You just if you have every single starship piece and you play uh yell yell, sorry, if you play yelling yodeler on the max size hunter starship, it will deal twenty damage four times to four random enemies. So it'll deal eighty total damage if they all hit face. That's crazy. It takes nine mana, yeah, but like it can't be renoed. You can't prevent that from happening. I guess. If you play Reno early, you could stop it, I guess, but whatever. It just looks really good, personally. So I think that it will be... The Hunter one would be good, but the the Rogue one, I don't really know. Like, just playing for stats doesn't seem like it's worth it, because Reno exists. Maybe if Reno Lone Ranger wasn't a card, right? Then it would be pretty decent, but just the fact that you're going to get it wiped off the board... Uh, I don't know. Reno just ruins the whole Starship mechanic so badly. It feels like a mechanic that's only going to work next year, and that's bad, right? That the whole set mechanic doesn't work this expansion. Yeah. Uh, then we have Farseer Nobundo. Uh, again, looks... I mean, a lot of these cards look fun, but they just don't look very good. Uh, 5 mana, 6, 4, uh, Drain Eye, Death Rattle, open the Galaxy's Lens. It absorbs the power of the next spell you play. It's a 5 mana location... That has two durability with spell burst, uh, recast the spell. Or 
I mean, cast, add that to the location and then when you use the location and cast a spell. So a lot of people are really hyped about this with From to Other Side, and that card has been in need of support since it came out. So From to Other Side is a 9-mana spell in Shaman from, uh, I think it's from March of the Lich King. Yeah, and it had absolutely terrible support the entire time it was in Standard, right? It got one good card in Fate Spinner in Titans, but then they had to nerf Fate Spinner alongside a lot of other cards because there was a bug that they couldn't fix. So what Fate Spinner would do is it was like a 3-mana three 3-3, three, three, Death Rattle, the card that, or add the card that killed this to your hand. So it would count from the other side, but then they removed that and then they like reworked all these cards to be, you know, not really interesting. And they like kind of nerfed a lot of cards because of this bug that they couldn't fix. I don't even know what the bug was. I'm going to be honest with you because I never had any issues with those cards anyway. So they had to get rid of that. And then, well, from the other side has just been a languish bad card for so long. No bundo though. This is support for it, right? Cause you can keep repeating it. It's just not that good, right? Like it, the, from the other side package is kind of, pretty bad like the only card that's really been added to it since from the other side came out was walking mountain that's it and like yeah walking mountain's a fine card but this is a wild deck we're talking about so like uh, uh, murmur i think murmur is probably the best legendary of the set maybe the second best uh because we'll get to something soon it's a 6-mana six 6-6 six, six elemental. Your battle cry minions cost 1, but immediately die after being played. I know a lot of people like to talk about, oh, the late-game combos with this card, but that's not why I think it's a broken card. I've I've talked about this a lot, why I think Murmur is a broken card. It's the fact that it sets up your Shutterwalk. You could play Murmur on turn 6, and then you could just play, like, a billion really expensive battle cries because of Parrot Sanctuary. So what you could do is you could play, like, Lotheb, Boom Pistol Bully, and then, like, Grumble. You could get your Murmur back, and then you played three expensive Battlecry minions all in one turn, and your Murmur now costs one. You do that with Zola to add Murmur back to your hand, etc. I think that's where Murmur becomes, like, a problematic card, right? Is the fact that you can play all these Battlecrys way sooner than you could have normally, and not really get that hurt because of it, right? Uh, that's why I think Murmur is a broken card. It still does those late-game combos, right? And that's good. That's still a good thing, right? It's a second shutter walk in those late game combos, right? But the early, the mid game power of this card is why I think that it's not fair. I really just don't think that it's going to be balanced because, well, sometimes you just play Murmur, Lotheb, Boom Pistol Bully on like turn five with the coin, with Parent Sanctuary. Your opponent has to skip their turn and then you have Murmur on board and you have a 6-6 six, six with that effect on board and you just win the game because of all the tempo that you've gotten. Sometimes that does just happen. And I don't think that that's going to be fair. I really think that's toxic. But maybe I'm just coping for thinking so. Uh, Kara, the Dark Star. This card also looks bad. Uh, it's a 3-mana, three 3-3 three, three, spell burst. Steal 2 health from a random enemy. It's a Warlock card, sorry. Uh, shadow spells don't remove the spell burst. I don't know. It just seems pretty bad. I think both of these cards are just terrible. There's nothing good to discount like with them. Uh, the only upside is that Priest has like Funnel Cake. And, uh, what's it called? Everla Love Everlasting, sorry. So it has, like, a way to, like, get mana back or discount its spells. And Warlock doesn't even have that, right? So, but, like, I think Kara might be a little better than Kure, like, as an individual card. Because, well, you know, with Kure, oh, you get a couple three drops. But Kara can, like, scale out of control if you tempo it. And maybe that's okay. It just seems, it just seems so bad, though. I really don't think it's going to do anything worthwhile. Like, I'm going to be so honest with you. It just seems so mid. Uh, then we have Archimonde. It's a 7 mana 7 7. Uh, Battle Cry, summon every demon that you've played this game. That instant your deck is also a demon. It looks fun. Don't get me wrong. I think, like, the, you know, the demon warlock looks really fun. I just don't think it's that good. Gonna be honest with you. It just seems pretty mid. It seems like, oh, you're getting all this infinite value, but, like, usually you'll just lose. Like, what deck can you play infinite value against that won't just end the game? You know, even in standard, decks don't go to fatigue anymore. They don't, they end games. So it just seems pretty mid. I don't know. I think it's just not that great. I gotta be honest with you. Like, yeah, you can resummon some demons, but they won't even get the stats that they had from being in your deck. So it doesn't matter if you have like a 30-30 demon, it's not going to have those stats, right? It's just meh. Uh, Exarch Akama. I think this card looks really good. Uh, it's a 5 mana 3-5, or 3-6, sorry. Drain Eye. After this attacks, all other friendly minions 
can attack except Exarch Akama. There is a 3 mana 3 4 battle cry. Your next Drain Eye uh, attacks, or after you play your next Drain Eye, it attacks a random enemy. That counts for Akama, so you can make a. Uh, you can already use a combo with that to gain the attack. If you give a combo rush, it can attack. And if you combine those, a combo will attack twice in the turn so that you can um, make your minions attack twice in a turn. And that looks really strong. Uh, like, Tempo Drain Eye Warrior looks really good to me. Maybe it's not that great. I'm going to be honest. Like, it didn't, no one really played it in theory crafting. And the only time I saw it was like Zeddy. And he kept, he kept really misplaying. He was not playing Tempo. Like, I, I I don't know what he was doing, man. He was just not playing on curve. <laughs> it was really weird. Uh, anyway, so like maybe there's that, but if you just play on curve, right? If you just play three, four, five, well, it's really hard to not just win the game because the deck is so disgusting. The The two mana weapon is such a disgusting card. It gives you so much attack. It gives your entire hand plus four attack after two turns. It's just such a disgusting card. I think there's no way that this like drain eye package is not playable, and it's obviously going to have XR comma, so yeah uh spore entry empress moldara six mana six seven start of game shuffle seven replicating spores into your deck they are five mana spells that and it reads summon a random five cost minion each spore that you play for the rest of the game also summons that minion so the first one will summon a random five drop the second will summon two five drops third one three five drops but it just it just it just bricks you it bricks you so hard because they're five mana spells that just get shuffled into your deck and they're and like what if you draw them early right draw them for turn five well you just didn't get a draw and it's just not worth it. it like you'd have to play like three of them before it starts being actually worth it i think and then like at that point you already spent 15 mana it's just so bad it's so terrible uh, Nexus Prince Shafar. This is like one of the best legendaries in the entire set. Three mana, three, three. Spell burst. Give a minion in your hand. Plus three, plus three. And spell burst. This spell burst. This card's already amazing. It is the pre-release card, right? So we know that it's really good. It's really good in Rogue. It's it's like really good in uh, Hunter and Wild. It's super fun to play with. I do think it's like, pro I think it's better than Murmur, actually. It just, it looks so, so strong. It looks super fun. I can't wait to experiment it with the uh, full expansion because there's like a lot of cards to play around with it. Uh, especially, you know, with all the Discover package and uh, Hunter, you can get this card way more efficiently and way more often. I just think that, like, Shafar is super cool. I love Next Sprint Shafar. It's one of my favorite cards of the entire year. I think it's, like, my... I think it might be a top five card of the entire year, honestly. It's so awesome. I think it's really good, too. I'm super happy that we get to play with it. The whole idea behind Shafar is that you play it with cards that have, like, Battle Cry, summon a copy of it, or you copy it in your hand. So, like... In Hunter, you play it with Wolpertinger, right? Because Wolpertinger is a 1-mana one 1-1 one, one with Battlecry Summon a copy. So then you'll get two of the spell bursts that you can put on another Wolpertinger. And that gives four spell bursts. And then you can put that on, like, charge minions or even more Wolpertingers to get it to 8, then 16, then 32, etc. And then you can do some pretty crazy stuff when you have that many stats. You can give it to charge minions and just kill your opponent. You can just build a giant board that they can't really clear. It's just, it's just really good. It's really, really strong. Uh, Kill Jaden. So I think Kill Jaden, again... It looks fun, but it's probably bad. It's a 7 mana 7-7 seven, seven demon. Battlecry replaces your deck with an endless portal of demons. Each turn, they gain an additional plus 2 plus 2. So, you have an infinite board. You can't take fatigue for the rest of the game. You can't have your board, your deck destroyed. You can't... I don't even think you can have stuff shuffled in. And you get infinite demons. The issue is random demons are kind of bad. Um, a lot of what people are trying to work with Kill Jaden, right, is... In Death Knight, you can run it with 8 hands so that your opponent you know, it doesn't have a deck and you do, and that's pretty, you know, can work, I guess. In Warlock, you summon, a, you just have like a billion like random demons and you try to high roll and summon a lot of large ones. But again, because the stats won't get resummoned because, well, that's not how cards work. Uh, Archimon just like seems pretty bad if you get like a lot of small demons and you just resummon those. And then shockingly, people were playing Kill Jaden in Hunter because of Exarch Nael. Uh, you just, like, it didn't matter if you didn't have a late game, you had so much value with your Discover package, and Nael gives you two draws a turn, so you can just keep playing more and more demons. Maybe that is good, maybe it is, right, the Hunter one, because that, a lot of people were playing that one, like, a lot of people, I think I even saw Sadisi trying it, so maybe it is, but I'm a little skeptical, I really am, so I don't know, uh, that's one that I have to try for sure on my own, but I still think that, like, it looks like a fun card, it's just probably not that good. Uh, then we have Velen, Leader of the Exiled. I think this card is good. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've already talked about how I think that the, the Priest and uh, Warrior deck look really strong. 
It's a seven so mana seven seven drain eye taunt death rattle trigger the battle cries and death rattle of all other drain eye you've played this game. That's why I'm saying like Ascara plus Velen is really good because well if you play Ascara into Velen you'll get two Velens. Then the Velens will have death rattles to repeat all drain eye including Ascara. So if you play another Velen you'll have four Velens. Then again once those Velens die you play another Velen you'll have uh what no how does the math work it dies you'll have two so you play one you'll have three you play one more you'll have four play one more you'll have five i don't i don't remember whatever it doesn't matter that you'll just you'll eventually just get so many villains that like you just keep building boards you have cards like astral vigilant which gives you another copy of your last drain out it's played that one you have um you know just like power cord synchronize or uh creation protocol to get more copies of astral vigilant or velen it just it just looked really good i'm gonna be honest with you it just looks really really good to be able to have an infinite board and then in warrior all the warrior drain eye effects are like really face oriented so you have the three mana three four that i talked about that makes your next drain eye attack which would work with velen you have a four mana five four which is your next drain eye gives you attack equal to its attack velen has seven attack but if it dies and you give it like yeah and you have like a you could have so there is a drain eye that has seven attack to start i guess felon does as well if you give it uh plus eight attack from two crystalline great maces which are both two mana weapons uh that you know when after you attack if drain eye in your hand plus two attack it can get up to 15 attack so it'll attack two random enemies as immune while attacking as well so it won't die and then you'll gain 30 attack from it and you just hit your opponent in the face really hard it's really cool i'm gonna be honest with you drain eye warrior looks so awesome it looks so freaking awesome. I can't get over it. Uh, the Exodar, I think. Oh, there it is. I think this card is really good as well. 8 mana, 6, 10. Battlecry, if you're building a starship, launch it and choose a protocol. You can use it to heal because it has an option that's gain, uh, or summon your starship, gain armor equal to twice its health. So you can get like 30 something armor from it and that's really good it has an option that is get all the starship pieces back so if you want to summon your starship just for tempo you can play that and then rebuild it yourself they all cost one so you can rebuild it really easily um that one's pretty dangerous to pick though because again it could be removed and then like your pieces could be like renoed or something that would be really bad and then there is an option that's like astalor where it's like deal damage equal to the starships attack randomly split among all enemies i think that one's like kind of mid it's like fine i guess with like this with the the rogue one right because you're gonna build like a gigantic one especially because you have an extra starship piece in rogue but it just seems like kind of mid overall i don't think it's that great i think the main like thing is the exodar is just so it lets you launch your starship and get a 610 and heal in the same turn and like for like warlock i guess which the warlock starship is pretty bad uh that would be the best use case for the warlock one though maybe if the life steal from the warlock one counts towards the exodar effect i just don't think it does because i think the effect comes from the exodar itself but i think the exodar is going to be really strong it launches your starships it just i don't know it's so many stats as well it's for plus three mana you're also getting 610 when you launch your starship it just seems pretty good i don't know and then lastly the ceaseless expanse i think this card is broken i think it's probably the best legendary of the set i think this is not a hot take uh it's 10 it's 100 mana 1515 cost one less for each card that was drawn uh played or destroyed battle cry destroy all their minions that's i mean the battle cry is fine it's pretty good this is a druid card obviously instantly goes into druid it's gonna be great in druid uh it's probably gonna be pretty good in rogue probably pretty good in death knight because of all the like corpses and stuff i think a lot of classes are gonna be really happy playing the ceaseless expanse just a really strong removal uh warrior and wild gets or not sorry not even wild warrior gets a big benefit from it because of black rock and roll they get a 115 115 minion and that is really hard to clear if you don't have spot removal like actual like hard removal it, you're not going to clear it and it also like clears the board so it's really not easy to clear i think that will be actually pretty interesting black rock, rock and roll maybe is going to be a playable card specifically because of your freaking 115 115 um but in wild you can play holy wrath with it so holy wrath paladin has been like pretty bad for a while now because a lot of nerfs that happened to it but it also just had perils in paradise and perils in paradise gave you cards well like seashell and seashell is a three mana three two your next non-rogue card costs two less which will lower the cost of 
order in the court and holy wrath from a seven mana to five mana and it's I'm gonna I'm gonna say that it's very unlikely that you will find most decks in the game able to survive taking 100 damage by turn seven uh I think that's very I think that's not a hot take I think that's a pretty pretty reasonable take most decks in the game will not be able to survive 100 damage on turn seven you don't have to play even aggro because it's not like you're playing the Shavala version where you're only dealing 25, right? So you don't have to like chip your opponent down by like 5 or 15 health, depending if they have Renathal anymore. So you're just actually actively killing them. So you can play way more draw heavy to draw your combo. And I think that's really good in wild. And also in wild, I feel like there's a world where you just run this in like certain decks, like just as like in a lot of uh, like Druid decks, I think also just run this in wild just as like a, a removal card. Uh, you can, technically, if you run this with a uh, pendant of earth, it's also going to heal you for a hundred, and that might be okay. I say might, I don't think so. But if pendant of earth still gave armor, oh my god, I I don't even know what I, I don't even know. I don't even know, man. Anyway, this is gonna be it. Uh, that's all the legendaries. I think that I think most of them look pretty fun. I just don't think a lot of them are that great. Um. But yeah, that's going to be it for me. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Tell me anything down below. What do you think about this tier list? Do you think I got any of these, like, really wrong? They're not really in order, aside from maybe, like, broken. I think that it goes like this, this, this. Everything else is not in order, so, like, you can make an argument for whatever is, like, better than the other. I don't really care. Uh, I just wanted to say, like, what I think is going to be pretty decent. And, yeah, that's going to be it for me. Uh, I have two giveaways going on for the Great Dark Beyond. One, all you have to do is comment down below your favorite card that of the expansion. Uh like the video and make sure to subscribe I, yeah, you have to be subscribed to win and then i have another that is for members it's like a twitch subscription it costs 99 cents for the lowest tier i'm not doing it for the money i'm just doing it because i like having members having members is like good for my channel it lets me add more emote slots and stuff like that and it's a really good way for me to give back to my community and yeah that's gonna be it for me i'll see you guys next time peace out shadows are rising again darker than they've ever been